In today's video, we build the first of two weaponized, armor-plated war rigs for use in Gaslands, the tabletop game of post-apocalyptic vehicular combat. Well, hi everybody, it's Lee from skirmishwargames.com. Welcome to the channel. This is hopefully going to be the first of two videos on building war rigs for Gaslands, the game of post-apocalyptic vehicular combat published by Osprey War Games. A Gaslands war rig is basically an armored transport slash mobile fortress that Gaslands teams use to haul their gear across the wasteland as they travel from event to event. So in this video, Lynn is going to build a Gaslands war rig using parts out of the sprue pile. And then in the next video, I'm going to build one, assuming that my current design isn't a complete disaster. We'll just have to see. So for today, let me start by running down the parts that Lynn has selected for her war rig build, since I kind of remember where they all came from. And then she'll walk us through the actual building process step by step. So let's start with this shiny new tractor trailer we have. So there's a lot of different sources for uh, appropriately sized war rigs. This was from eBay. It was a Chinese manufacturer and this came from China and it was really cheap. Very inexpensive so we don't mind mangling it for the sake of uh, creating a Gaslands war rig. So we got this. This is the starting vehicle. This is the one you chose. And then what's your plan for it? What are you kind of thinking? I'm looking at two miniguns, two heavy machine guns, the ram. So you're going to have two side-mounted miniguns on each side. And these uh, guns actually came from um, All Quiet on the Martian Front. Let's see, where's that sprue? Oh, that's here. So we went to a, a gaming convention not too long ago, and one of the vendors had a big tub of uh, sprues and metal minis and terrain and all kinds of stuff for All Quiet on the Martian Front. I guess he was just unloading it. And so we got the whole thing for 20 bucks plus the tub. So we're cannibalizing these British steam tanks and... Um, these little, um, is that sponsons? Is that what they call the side guns? I forget exactly. But we're going to use those for the uh, side mounted mini guns on your war rig. Yes. We could uh, wax philosophical about the markdown on uh, gaming stuff once people start cleaning out the garage, but um, we won't get into that. So these are little uh, side cannons that are meant to go on those British steam tanks, and you're going to kind of plaster them to the side of your shipping container on your tractor trailer rig. Correct. Okay. I don't know if you guys saw the video we did on uh, Tenelog, the Russian uh, miniatures company, and some of the cheap plastic sprues we got uh, from Russia. This came from one of their Robo Gear kits. I think it was the Demolisher. So we stole that, and that is a pair. It looks like machine guns, but it's actually a pair of uh, exhaust pipes. So that may or may not go on your rig, correct? Correct. Okay. What else you got going on? And then for my heavy machine guns, we stole them from... I think these sprues are Tenelog uh, 15 or 20 millimeter tanks. I bought them again on eBay. They were pretty cheap. You got a whole set of tanks for like six bucks. And we're just kind of ruthlessly cannibalizing the parts for projects like this. So I'm going to use the tank bodies for mounts for the yeah. front and back for the heavy machine guns. Okay. So you're kind of thinking, and of course things could change, heavy machine gun forward, heavy machine gun rear, and then too many guns per side. huh? Yep. It's going to be a and gun platform. Ram. And then a ram. Okay. And then, of course, my guys are going to have grenades just to round it out. Got our little dudes. They're going to be shooting out of the cab and out of the trailer, actually. I think I'm going to cut a hole in the trailer. Yeah, your war rig's got five crew. At least one's got to be driving, and then you need one for every gun. So you'll have to kind of decide where all those guys go. And then... Uh, Got to have some decorations. Yeah. Those old uh, Chaos Warrior sprues from about the year 2000. So Games Workshop 2000. Yeah, we bought some uh, Chaos Warriors on eBay, and uh, the guy sent his old sprues, and we just keep a box of old sprues. We just keep clipping parts off of them. So I guess your team is a Chaos team, because they're going to have Chaos Bling. They're going to have Chaos Bling. Yeah. And, of course, they're going to have some corrugated metal. So we're going to take our Chipotle top. I'm going to crumple it with the metal tube squeezer. Yeah, this funny thing here, a metal tube squeezer, so if you were trying to get the last little bit of toothpaste out of the tube or uh, glue or whatever you're working with, put that in those gears and squeeze away. But if you run metal through there, it's supposed to corrugate it. We're going to experiment with making our own corrugated metal, and that'll be sort of your armor plating for your war rig. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of my plan. It may change, but that's what it is right now. <laughs> Time to deconstruct our cabin trailer. 
The nice thing about this one is it had screws instead of rivets, so it'll make it a lot easier when we're putting it back together. No glue needed. Just pop it apart. And we got rid of the window because we're going to put plastic canvas over them like armor. So on the trailer I'm going to end up cutting out a slot for the gunners so they're a little protected in there. I already marked it off so once I get the base off I can take the rotary tool to cut out the slot for my gunners. So I just pull that piece out and snip it off, clean it up a little bit, and then I'll start on the other side. Now that we've got the slots, the gunners have a safe place to shoot from. Now it's time to make our corrugated metal. It looked like the Chipotle container was a bit too small, so we're taking these two-for-one pans we got at the dollar store, snipping them apart, and getting ready to run them through the metal tube squeezer. So hopefully this will take our cheap aluminum and turn it into corrugated metal. Being as thin as it is, it's going through really easily and it's coming out really nice. I like the look of that. So the corrugation process does shorten it up quite a bit, so you want to take that into account when you do it. Give it an extra 25% or so, just to be on the safe side. So now to measure where the gun port is, so that I can cut out the slot. I'll use an X-Acto knife to cut it out, and then once it's cut out, I'll just pop it apart at the perforations it makes. Looks like we got the slot in the right place, so we'll set that aside so we can mount our heavy machine guns front and back. So I'll use some brush on Gorilla Glue. From experience, just don't glue your fingers to the trailer. It's no fun. I wanted to use Gorilla Glue for the metal as well, but it did not adhere. So we're pulling out the big guns two-part epoxy. Only problem with two-part epoxy is this one takes a lot longer to set up, so we'll have to leave it overnight. Since my first piece of corrugated metal shortened up so much, I made the second one a lot longer so it'd wrap around. Since the metal kept wanting to pop off the container, we decided to use rubber bands, clothespins, and then weighted it down with wrenches to make sure it had good contact overnight for the drying process. We were happy to find in the morning that the corrugated metal stuck, so now we can continue with the project. And here's my rooftop grenadier. I need two ladders for my container, one for the front and one for the back, so I'm just going to clip them out of some plastic canvas. Amazing how a little piece of plastic canvas can end up looking like a ladder. So looking through the bits box, I found a bunch of pieces that I'm going to use for armor plating on my cab. To attach the ram and all the other bits, I'm going to use steel stick because it sets up faster than green stuff. And here's a hatch from the British steam tank sprue, in case our crewmen ever need to escape. Here's our progress so far. Now to install our crew with a healthy dose of steel stick. So now they're safe and secure in the container, ready to take on any bandits. The crew and the cab are about ready to jump in, but it looks like they're too tall. We'll snip them down to size so they'll fit, and we'll install them a little later. Glue in some plastic canvas as armor over the windows. Once it's painted, it should look like metal grating. Some of the curved armor plating was too long for the roof, so I'm cutting it down with the rotary tool. Here's the pieces cut to size, so we can install them on the roof with steel stick. Our scrap roof armor is in place, now we can work on the rest of the cab. Something for the hood, for the roof, definitely something for the doors. Almost completed now, looks like we still need some plastic canvas in those upper windows. I need to get that extra steel stick cut away before it sets. For the last of our armor, we'll add some protection to the side of the engine. We have everything glued on now, and we're ready to tie it together with some paint. To start with, I'm going to use the Metallic Paint and Primer Rust-Oleum Satin Nickel. This is going to be our base coat, so we want nice solid coverage on the tractor and the trailer. Even with just the primer, it's starting to look like a war rig. When I was checking out my coat of primer, I noticed I forgot to add the miniguns, so I better get those on before we continue. It's not ideal, but it should be fine. With the steel stick dry, I can now prime my miniguns. 
Then over the satin nickel, I'm going to use some of the darker Rust-Oleum metallics in small areas. This will simulate a bit of dirt and grime before we get on to the rust effects. Now to add in some hammered copper and aged metallic rust. For this, we just want to spritz here and there, mostly trying to hit the edges before we go into our detailed brushwork. It's time to let our tractor and trailer dry for a bit before we take it back to the paint table for the final steps. My team is called Red Running, so the entire crew will have red jackets. On the trailer, I'm going to use copper and aged gold for the accents. The copper over the satin gives a nice rust-like look, which adds to the rust and copper we put on with the Rust-Oleum rattle can. For the edges of the minigun turrets, I want to give it a little rust effect too, so we'll add some copper there, as well as on the edges of the corrugated metal. A war rig picks up a lot of rust running through the wastelands. As you can see, the corrugated metal picks up that paint really easy. I thinned out the copper and ran it along the ridges, got some really nice effects. Here's what the trailer looks like now that we've finished the painting on it. I just need to add a few more things and it'll be ready. War rigs aren't all about the rust, gotta add some bling too. Gonna put on our chaos flag and emblems. The red running flag emblem goes on the back. The skull emblems, those will go on the sides. Gotta make sure we trim out the excess steel stick so that doesn't show when we're done. With the machine guns and miniguns installed, we're now ready to move on to painting the cab. Since our name is Red Running, we want to get some red accents on there along with the aged gold, copper, and bronze. So that the plastic canvas looks more like rebar, I'm going to paint it with some gun metal. We don't want anyone to be in doubt of what our name is, so we're going to hand letter the Red Running right on our cab. Here we're adding some red accents to the Tenalog Demolisher Ram that we stole. Our cab is painted and almost ready for assembly. Last thing to do is get some mud on those tires. Since this truck used screws instead of rivets, it was much easier to put back together. I noticed that I forgot all about the shiny gas tanks on the base, so we're going to need a coat of gunmetal to kind of tone it down. So our Red Running War Rig is now complete, ready to hit the wastelands and head for the next arena. Okay, Lynn, well, I think your War Rig looks great. What would you think about this project? I like how all the different pieces from all different places came together to make a cohesive whole. Yeah, it's amazing how a coat of primer can tie everything together. What was your favorite part of this project? I think my favorite part of this whole process was learning how to make corrugated metal. It was so easy to make. The hard part was getting it to stick to the trailer. Once we figured that out, it worked really well. Okay, well, any final thoughts on Operation Red Running? Always be willing to try new things and never throw away any of those old bits. Okay, well, now that Lynn has completed her war rig, I suppose I better get cracking on mine, and hopefully I'll have something acceptable to share in an upcoming video. In the meantime, if you like what we do here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up and visit us online at our website skirmishwargames.com